Hello everyone. I am Dr. Vivek. I am a vitreo retinal surgeon at Shaker Eye Hospital. Today, I am going to speak about AI or artificial intelligence in ophthalmology. As we all know, AI is the buzzword today. Its applications are vast and wide and it, it's penetrated every aspect of our lives. So how can ophthalmology be out, away from it? In fact, it's easier for AI to penetrate into ophthalmology because much of our diagnosis and treatment and everything is dependent on images. And since images are easily accessible, reproducible and comparable, bringing in artificial intelligence into ophthalmology is a very, very logical thing and it is bound to happen. So, a lot of uh, di diseases, eye diseases can be managed with the artificial intelligence, specifically diabetic retinopathy, glaucoma and age-related macular degeneration. Of course, corneal disorders, pterygium, cataract also can be identified, quantified and signified. So, how uh, each and every one of these uh, diseases can be managed or helped with AI is the topic of our discussion today. In diabetic retinopathy, as we all know, the diagnosis depends on visualizing the retina. So if we have good quality images, that can be compared. In fact, the AI can read these images over a period of time and diagnose and quantify the severity of the diabetic retinopathy as well as tell you the prognosis, that is the outcome of the treatment and also in fact predict the level of diabetic retinopathy or the time in which the diabetic retinopathy might evolve to need treatment, which can help in uh, what not only suggesting to the patient how and when you might need the treatment, it will also probably hint them or uh, push them or nudge them to control their diabetes better. So that's it's a very good educational tool as well. The next would be glaucoma. Glaucoma, as you would know, is a continuous, slowly progressive disease which cannot be picked up in its earlier stages. and. Uh, there is something called as an area under the curve. So this learning curve of diagnosing glaucoma at an early stage dependent on various uh, inputs, data sets. Uh, even in uh, trained, under trained clinicians is somewhere around in the range of around 0.6 to 0.7. Whereas with some AI tools, it has been documented to reach to the level of 0 0.92, 0 0.93, where the diagnostic accuracy or the predictive accuracy of glaucoma is much higher amongst AI tools. In uh, AMD, that is age-related macular degeneration where it leads to wet AMD, it has a lot of advantages. The AI can actually predict a development of wet AMD in a patient of dry AMD or no AMD or it can also after three or four consecutive injections, it can uh, even prognosticate or tell you what is the expected outcome by the end of one year, how many injections or how many treatments might be required. So, so that the patient can plan, the patient as well as the doctor in consultation with each other can plan the treatment, can plan the follow-up visits because as we know these conditions affect people who are really elderly and mobility is an issue for them. Uh, people accompanying them is also going to be difficult because of our societal structure. So these things are going to help in the future. Apart from that, there is a the diagnosis of cataract can also be easily done with uh, AI. So many a times people come to us with uh, complaints about their vision and they, they may not be able to attribute whether it is due to cataract or not. With an AI tool, the, not only the diagnosis but even the quantification of the cataract can be done so that they can, the decision making with respect to cataract surgery and what kind of lens can be implanted, all these things can be done with the help of AI. So the, apart from that, corneal diseases, corneal dystrophies, ulcers, keratitis, these conditions can also be accurately diagnosed. In fact, when the proper data is fed into the system, the AI can itself differentiate between different type of corneal ulcers which can help in faster decision making and uh, initiation of the appropriate treatment. So hence, th these are all basically dependent on images and hence it is going to be easier to implement or bring in AI uh, into ophthalmology. So it's a very good future that we are looking at. But what is the current status? is it's it's not all um, happy and uh, glorified glorified right now because most of the studies that have been done are single center studies on a single machine so the uniformity of the data is there because of which comparison is easier whereas in real world we can't compare like i would have a camera which is different from a person in uh, delhi or mumbai or mysore for that matter so my 
photography, my skill of photography or capturing those images is different from that person. My uh, image quality is different because of the machine that I own. And hence, the comparison becomes difficult for an AI. So when the images are not the same, comparison is difficult for an AI. This is a limitation. And then when the images are hazy, so a person may not, a patient may not come with a single problem in the eye. There might be multiple problems which might lead to poor visualization during images. And when the images are poor, then the quality of AI drops drastically. Like I, in, uh, earlier I mentioned about area under curve. The area under curve from a 0.9 can drop down to 0.4 or 0.3 if the images quality are not good. Not good. And this is where an experienced doctor pitches in. For an experienced doctor, even if the image quality is lesser, in fact, his or her area under curve goes up from say 0 0.5, 0 0.6, it can go up to 0 0.8, 0 0.9. So that is the difference. And hence, these are some of the limitations that we are um, going through. And there is an issue about that data privacy also. So as we all know, AI is majorly dependent on data. The more data we feed the system, the more accurate it becomes. So now there is a lot of issue about data privacy and protection. So we do not know how to provide data, how to annotate those data because once we provide the data, we have to annotate that this is this person's data, so and so's data at that point in time, whether he or she is a diabetic, hypertensive, all these clinical information has to be uh, given to the uh, center which is gathering the, those data, which becomes uh, an, another problem with respect to data protection and privacy. And then inter interpretability and familiarity with the healthcare provider is also going to be an issue. I need to be familiar with the machine. Uh, when I interpret the outcome uh, or the output given by the AI. So these are all things which are going to be uh, a challenge in future. There are more complex uh, engineering issues which are coming up off late. As and when we keep using them, we'll get to know more and more uh, minute problems or min minute details which can actually affect the outcome of AI. Something like data pre-processing, and dust sets, sets and stationary environments, these are all not, which are not assured. Like we do not know, I mean, we do not get uniform data. Like you might be aware that an HbA1c level of six is considered uh, good diabetes control in some labs, whereas 6.5 or seven is considered good in different lab. So then these data sets are not exactly comparable, not really very, very, uh, very comparable. Similarly, environments. So you cannot uh, pick a person in South India and compare it with in Eastern China or Northern Siberia or Southern America and things like that. So these are all things which are challenges which are coming up. And hence, uh, it uh, the applicability in today's management of eye diseases is not that great. It, but we are still, we are, Compared to three to five years back, we have actually advanced so much. So the, that is why it is called as a breakthrough. The breakthrough can happen at any given point of time. And with the pace at which the technology is advancing, I presume that AI will play a major role in the management of all kinds of eye diseases in future. But as of now, it's a very interesting field. It is still in the, in the realm of helping or confirming the diagnosis that we are already making and not exactly uh, adding to our uh, armamentarium. So that is where we stand. I hope I have answered most of the uh, queries that you might be having about AI. And this is not something which is cast in stone because as we say, every day things are changing with particularly with respect to AI, deep learning, machine learning and things like that. These are all fancy terminologies personally also don't understand completely but as we keep uh, diving deeper we keep uh, realizing it better. Hope so I have answered a few questions. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video.